As a kid, I didn't know where I was supposed to throw in my trash after lunch. I would peek into both the trash and recycling bin, wondering what I should do with my plate. In both bins alike, I saw plates and utensils. Apparently, my classmates didn't care about recycling or were as confused as I was. As I stood in front of the bins for a few minutes, still stuck with my indecision, my friends called out to me saying, come on, Ellie, it doesn't matter where you throw it, it all goes to the dump anyway. We have all heard the advice to start recycling and use metal straws, but for what? Is recycling my coffee cup actually gonna stop climate change? Is recycling actually doing anything or is it just an empty slogan we can use to rebury our problems? First of all, every city has different requirements and regulations for how their trash gets recycled, but as a country, the EPA estimates that 75% of American trash is recyclable yet we only actually recycle 30% of it. That is an insane number. Think back to all the times popular companies have asserted that a large percentage of their products get recycled, greenwashing their audience to continue to buy their products, guilt and conscience free. We buy environmentally friendly packaging options because we think we are actually making a difference when in reality, recycling isn't as good as we think. It's time to stop being ignorant and start understanding what's happening before it's too late. Companies have been blaming and putting the responsibility on the consumer for too long. Companies are producing many plastic bottles and other hazardous materials and in the process burning lots of oil and creating fossil fuel fumes that go up into the atmosphere and heat up our planet. One popular soda company's carbon footprint is equivalent to 108 billion bottles a year which is more than a fifth of the world's plastic bottles. A company might say that their products aren't bad and aren't using fossil fuels as long as the bottles are recycled. However, if you look at the number of plastic bottles produced in 2021 and compare it to the amount of oil burned to create that plastic, we see a different reality. In 2021, 583 billion plastic bottles were produced from 18 billion gallons of oil. This is equivalent to every single person on the planet drinking six sodas a month for an entire year, and this number is only going up. If we continue on this route, there will be no future left for our planet. Time Magazine reported, for too long, they say, the burden of recycling has fallen on consumers. Companies tell their customers to recycle plastic bags or place yogurt containers in their proper bins without actually trying to make sure their products are easily recyclable in the first place. Then, cities and towns have to sort through the recycling and remove potential contaminants such as greasy pizza boxes or chip bags. Only 9% of plastic products are actually recycled. In 2018, recycling became even harder when China stopped accepting many recyclables the U.S. was sending them. Before, cities were getting paid for recycling their garbage, but then had to switch to paying for the recycling to be picked up. This resulted in a $400 million loss, and the cities either stopped their recycling programs or sent all their recyclables to the incinerator. As a way to help reduce the burden on consumers, some government officials now support laws that force companies to pay for the cost of getting rid of their product after the consumer has finished using it. Laws like these are called EPR, which stands for Extended Producer Responsibility, meaning the creators of the products don't lose responsibility after the customer has finished using it. The companies still have to figure out ways to recycle the product. States including Washington, New York, Maine, and Massachusetts are considering implementing EPR laws into their current legislation. A chief executive of a Massachusetts-based environmental group said, governments can no longer ignore the fact that recycling systems are no longer working. And listen, I understand that we can't solve this problem overnight, but as a community, we are trying to make a difference. For example, my school's cafeteria uses cups and utensils made of potato waste. They also post images of the items that go in the various waste bins so we don't create potential contamination in the wrong bins. And nowadays it is getting even easier to be more environmentally friendly. The cost of environmentally friendly items has drastically dropped, making them almost the same price as single-use items. Although companies and governments aren't the only ones to blame, people like you and I need to step up and make a difference in our current lifestyles. 
This difference could be throwing away your garbage in the right bin or reducing your consumption of plastic. There is something that consumers do called wish cycling. Wish cycling is when you place an item in the recycling bin hoping it will get recycled even though you know it doesn't belong in that bin. Examples can range from extra food left on a takeout container that you didn't want to wash out or a greasy pizza box. By putting these items in the wrong bin, you're contaminating other clean recyclables which could have been recycled but now have to be put in the landfill. Instead, consumers should take the time to wash out their recyclables and make sure nothing is contaminated. In my school, I participated in a day without single-use plastic challenge. Throughout the whole day, I had to avoid using single-use items, whether it be my yogurt container or a Hint water bottle. Otherwise, I would fail the challenge. Within the first few hours of the challenge, I failed, and I realized that plastic is so hard to get out of my life. I had to actively keep the thought in my head to avoid plastic, yet I still failed. It is such a habit for humans to use plastic that we don't even register actually how much we use. I think plastic is practically impossible to avoid and it will probably outlive me. Currently, many research groups such as the USC Pfizer Lab Catalyst Design for Sustainable Transformations are working on different ways to recycle plastics and reverse the damage of what has been done. Currently, there are seven different types of plastics, some of which are commonly recognizable. For example, PET and PVC are commonly used and known. These plastics are currently being mechanically broken down using extreme heat to return to their original form. The downside of this is that plastics can only be mechanically recycled around seven times before their structure is broken and the plastics turn brittle and can't be used again. This USC lab is researching and conducting two new ways to recycle plastics. The first is to chemically break down the polymers of pre-existing plastics to reuse many times. The second way is to make new polymers from sustainable materials that can be chemically recycled and reused many times. These new sustainable polymers would also be biodegradable. Personally, I have always felt passionate to help the environment and make a difference. Ever since I was little, I've loved plants and animals and I've wanted to protect the world from the oncoming onslaught of climate change. Growing up, that urge has only become greater as the times get more severe. It is no longer a myth. Climate change is real and it's our reality. It won't be a problem of the future if there is no future to come. We are destroying our only planet and are doing nothing to stop it. Many Americans are concerned with the fact that the children of my generation have to stand up and deal with the mess our forefathers created. So they are doing something about it, and so should you. Some of the most effective ways to make a difference are switching to renewable energy sources, reducing consumption of plastic and single-use items, and supporting businesses that promote climate justice. With gas prices surging right now, maybe you should consider switching to electric cars. And sure, some of you might be questioning whether spending that extra money to buy environmentally friendly options is worth it. But let me tell you, it is. Plastic needs to be cut out of our lives in order to change the world. People like you and I are the missing pieces in solving climate change. One million people have all thought, maybe I should do something, but change is made individually, person by person, by those who decide to step up. Thank you.